up there and teaching Bible studies. Amen. He's not ashamed of the gospel. The bus drivers are coming up to me saying they're, that there's people on the bus talking about church and trying to get Bible studies set up. And so it lets me know that we've got a young person here that's excited about the gospel and that's not ashamed of his game. Amen. He's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's out there trying to teach Bible studies on the bus. And I know him and Sister Sherry are trying to do a work there. And so we're so grateful for him and his passion for souls. And so I asked him to come and, and greet the congregation and leave what the Lord has put on his heart for tonight. So let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's welcome Brother Alex as he comes to minister the word of God. spiritually when he says it was thrown by the wayside. 
and the saint can come up and take them away. What light does for us is it shines in a dark spot. If we have the light, then Satan can't come and attack us. Satan can't get at us and can't really get to us. And when it says they were thrown by the wayside, when I see that, I kind of think of those in the church. And almost every church has them. There are people who come into the church and they're like, oh, that's awesome. There's someone new here. But no one really talks to them. No one establishes their presence with them. They just come in. They sit in maybe the third pew from the back, and they come for church, and they come up, and maybe someone will pray with them, but that's it. No one talks to them. Yeah. And what we need to do is we need to shine the light of God yes, sir. Yes. In, in our own lives, even at the church. You know, you say they're coming to church, they're so at the church. So they're getting what they need, but really what it needs is the people of God in the church, Amen. the well-seasoned saints, to go on and to establish a presence, Amen. to show that. Look, we have the light of God. No matter what you're going through, there, there's hope, there's light. Amen. you just got to bear with us. Now, in 16, he says we need soil. And these, they, these that are likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves. And so endure for it, but for a time. Afterwards, when affliction and persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, that, that scripture in 17 there alone, I'm going to take a little bit from that. And it says affliction and persecution. When, this, when stuff like that comes across the pulpit, you know, for the word of God. When the pastor gets up and he starts preaching against things that are sin, like pornography, homosexuality, we get offended. Because we're stuck in that bondage. We're stuck in that sin. And because no one's established the light to us and the hope, we have no roots. So when we get offended, we fall. We fall back. We backslide. We go back to our old life because they offended us. People these days get so offended. So easy. And the world's showing them, look, you don't have to do that if you're offended. At our school, in my sign language class, we have a Jehovah Witness in our class. And the other day, he wasn't there, so the teacher was able to teach us a little more signs on the holidays. And she's like, I don't teach those signs because he's offended. It's like, well, I lack education because these people get offended. And because school's teaching them that if you get offended, let us know. And we won't do it anymore. Now, I'm pretty sure if I was to go and tell them that their gay straight alliance club offends me, then I'd get shot down. Why? Because I'm a Christian. Because I represent Jesus. And everybody's so careful about offending everybody else but Jesus, yeah, that's true. That's true. our God. I'm sure if he was here on earth, you know, walking in the flesh again, he'd be like, I am very offended. Very offended. And they'd be like, oh, you're just Jesus. And then you'd strike him down. <laughs> like, you're just flesh. Goodbye. <laughs> so we lack in stuff like that because the world is teaching people that it's okay to be offended. And it's okay to leave the situation you're in. Yeah. You know, in social studies, we got to do these other religions. And we learn about Buddha. We learn about the Muslim faith and all that stuff. But what we barely touch upon is Christianity. I don't know if it's assuming because everybody that, you know, oh, I don't believe in Buddha. I don't believe in Muhammad. So I must be a Christian. Yeah. They believe we already know, probably. I don't know if it's that or if people get offended too much and are too picky and big whiny babies and whine about it. But we don't cover the topic of Jesus in school, ever. You know, they're talking about taking the pledge and, and changing it and taking under God under it, out of it. On, um, on the day of September 11th, the um, assistant principal irritated me because she, um, she came and she gave a small little spiel about 9-11, which wasn't even right, it wasn't even accurate. And then she began to say the pledge. And when she got to the one nation under God part, she missed it. And I was like, are they taking that out? Because if they did at that moment, I would have walked out. I would be like, now you have offended me. And because you say it's okay, I'm going to leave. So we need, to, we need to have roots in the word. And how do we get roots? We, we get in, we study. 
And we all have, I'm pretty sure all of us have a Bible. And if not, you can ask someone and they'll give you one because there's people who have mass supplies of them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have a mass supply of half of Bibles yeah. because I have a family member who gives me a half a Bible. So I have, I have the last half. <laughs> A lot of them. <laughs> I mean, I, I love them, you know, but I, I have a lot of half, half, half of Bibles. Every time I see them, I get one. And my mom and sister can testify to that. We all, we all get a half a Bible every time the Bible comes to town. <laughs> so, I mean, if I was to give someone a Bible, I'd give them the whole thing. Purely so they can read the whole thing and not get half of it. <laughs> Because there's, you know, you can bring your half a Bible to church, and the pastor will say, "Open to Genesis 3 5. <laughs> You know, the, you know. Do you have it? No, I have half a Bible too. <laughs> so their roots are half developed, like my tree in my front yard. It's half developed, half of its dead. And the other half isn't, you know. So as Christians, we can be like a half-dead tree and be halfway established in the Bible. Even if we have the full Bible, we can only study specific things, you know, especially other churches that don't believe in the oneness of God. They'll study just the uh, Trinitarian stuff. And they won't look at anything else, and they won't focus on anything else. So I was telling him the other day, I said, they might as well throw the other half out. You know, especially the book of Acts. Everybody in the book of Acts got baptized in Jesus' name. If they don't believe in that, then they must take that book out, and then they only have half a Bible. So they're half-rooted, they're half-dead. You know, and come our judgment day, I don't think God's going to take a half-dead crowd. <laughs> you know, this plant has half, half a cucumbers. I want this one. <laughs> It'd be fun, but no, he don't, he don't want half. Half cucumbers, he wants whole cucumbers for his salad, or whatever he's making up there. <laughs> so we need to get rooted, and there's several ways that we can get rooted, you know. And I believe one one good way to get rooted, and it's kind of necessary in the church, is that the church, the seasoned saints of the church, have to go out and have to mentor other people. You know, we have to get the Bible established. You know, we have to get the the truth in them. So they understand and they fully begin to understand. So that way when the pastor starts talking about Jesus' name baptism, they don't get offended and leave because they're old church baptized the other way. But they know and they understand that that's right and they know, oh, I need to go up there and get baptized. Because it's important. You know, one, one reason I left my other church is because I didn't get a mentor. He, he, I asked for one. You know, I told him, I was like, look, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. And a month passed, nothing. No Bible study, nothing. So I was like, well, you're not helping me. Bye. <laughs> I left that, and they weren't in the truth, so to speak. But, you know, I left. And even, um, even their youth pastor said, I could have seen this coming. Well, why didn't you do anything? <laughs> why didn't you do anything about it? We have saints in the church who... See, see other people, you know, and they see what's wrong with them, and they know, oh, they could, they aren't getting Bible studies, but yet we don't, we don't Bible study, and we don't mentor, and we don't talk to them. We have new people that are coming, you know, a lot coming recently because we're pulling in the harvest, and we don't, we don't go up to them and we don't say, hey, do you need a Bible study? Are you getting Bible studies? You want one? You know, let's work together, and we'll get you rooted, we'll get a foundation established. And everything, that's probably one of the reasons Pastor has this foundation class. So that way, if they're not getting Bible studies by anybody, they can go out there and get the foundation that they need. So that way, when they begin to read the Word, they can understand it and get Bible studies themselves if they feel called to do that. But I feel like well-seasoned saints need to get in touch with the, the newcomers, the people who've come in the last year or so. And they need to Bible study them, and they need to establish it. The faith, you know, if you want to be committed to a church, you gotta know, you gotta know what they believe in, you know, you gotta know why, why we do this and why we do that. It's important. So we need a good foundation. 
we need water. In verse 18, Jesus says, And these that which are sown amongst thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of his word, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and become unfruitful. Now we need we need the water to come and keep the keep the soil strong, to keep the roots strong. You know, if we get our Bible studies and everything, and then we stop coming to church, we are not getting water. Our roots are going to die, and we're going to we're not going to make it. We're going to spiritually be dead. But we're going to claim to be part of FAC. But we don't go there anymore, and we spiritually die because no one's been. Continuing to give them Bible studies after you teach them the main stuff, you need to start teaching them other things that they need to know. You need to stay in touch with them. Uh, Sister Ebright was telling me a while back that statistics show that if someone comes to a church and within this amount of time they don't get connected with anybody, they leave the church and will most likely never come back. It's because they don't have the soil. They don't have the right soil to have the right roots. They aren't getting the light to shine in the darkness of their life. And they aren't getting the water to keep the thorns from coming in and chopping, us, chopping them out. Now, if you have all of this, the, the thorns can still come in. You know, that's not what he's saying is they won't really bug you. They'll still try and come in. Because the enemy will see what you're going to be and what you're going to do. And he'll see the anointing and calling on your life. And they'll still come in and they'll still try to attack you, choke you, and get you down. But what we have to do is we have to not let that get to us. Because we have the light. we got to take the light and shine it. Like on a rainy day, the light shines through and we see a nice beautiful rainbow remembering us of the promise and all that. We have light to dry out the rain. These three things work together and make a big, strong tree. We get new roots, we get new everything. It's, and it's a whole new plant. It could have been a crop that had corn, but now you get big, huge watermelons and pumpkins from this plant. You know, it, it was promised to us. He says, though, you know, if we get all of this, we'll see the we'll see the harvest. You know, it'll bring forth thirtyfold. You know, some sixty and some a hundred. Amen. And that's one thing I've kind of been noticing as I've been. You know, as I've been going out and reaching to these people and giving them Bible studies, they'll bring someone with them. Yeah. You know, they'll bring someone to church. And that, that's the fruit coming in okay. from other things. Yeah. It's like with cats. You know, they see that there's food here. They'll come back. And they'll always come back and then you can't get rid of them. <laughs> Brother Cameron, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, they'll come back and you can't get rid of them because they know. They know that you can get roots here. They know, look, there's good soil over there. Yeah. And we don't have to think the grass is greener on the other side because we know it's just fine right here. We got a nice pad of grass to graze on. You know, we can establish roots, we get water, we get sunlight. It's perfect. It's like with planting a seed, you got to have it in the perfect spot for the perfect sunlight and the perfect soil. Some call for sandy soil, others for full sunlight, others for half. you got to get that established, you got to get it right. And as the people of God, we're, we're, wanting these, we're wanting souls saved, but we aren't establishing these things. We aren't getting them soil, we aren't getting them sunlight, and we aren't getting them water. And then we say, oh, why, why, why did this person backslide? You know, and then at that point we're gossiping because we're wanting to know why they backslid and then why they backslid. Oh, of course they're an alcoholic, so they fall back into alcoholism. And, and then you go say, hey, 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 Brother Cameron, someone's so backslid because they're an alcoholic. That's why they're going. Now you just gossiped. <laughs> That's why some things, you know, in that situation, if it's why someone backslid, you don't, you don't need to ask why, because it can lead to other things. You know, pray for them. There was um, one person that I was, you know, talking to, and of course they aren't here anymore, unfortunately. 
but you know, I was I was trying so hard to get them to you know come back, do do this, do that. And what I learned was is it was it was making me more stressed about it. And I learned at that point all I needed to do was pray, release someone to Jesus, and pray. And that's it. And that's what we need to do with some some things, especially you know with um, our family. You know, they say family is the hardest people to um, get to come to church, the hardest people to get to, because they know you, you know, and they see other stuff that you do, and if you don't have your witness, then they won't listen to you. And that's why God sends other people. You know, you pray about them, you call their name out in prayer, but you don't nag them, you know, hey, come to church, come to church, come to church. Every time they talk to you, come to church. You know, you need Jesus. <laughs> You know, it's not going to work out. And then when God does send someone to them, it, it may not work. Because they've done seen you and seen how annoying you are. And they don't want no part of it. So they're shut down. And that, that's another thing I learned. Is that don't, don't be annoying. Don't nag them. Don't irritate them. <laughs> you know. And that's why with people who are new to the church, you know, once... They come, maybe their second or third time, go ask them, hey, you want to get some Bible to the study start, you know? Go have lunch, we'll get into the Word, and I'll teach you some things. And if they say no, then let it go for the moment and start praying about them until you feel led to maybe ask them again. Because maybe they're feeling like they need to come ask you, but they don't know how. So God says, go ask them. Go ask them again. And then you'll get a yes. You'll say, sure, yeah. Let's have Bible studies. And you'll get them rooted and you'll get a foundation laid and a foundation established. And that right there is basically how we become fishers of men. Because we go out, we, we talk to them, we witness to them, we just be nice, you know. We're supposed to be nice all the time, you know, me or harsh or anything, but we just be ourselves. We be nice, you know, we show them what God's done in our life. And how he's moving, you know, telling them some things that are going on in the church. Like if I was to talk to somebody else, I'd tell them how grandma got healed, you know. And another one I pull is from Brother Cameron, his testimony, because it's so powerful, you know, that I pull that too as well as a tool to kind of get people and see and say, look, this is what God can do. You know, he's done this for them. Imagine what he can do for you. That's right. You know, you show them the uh, extreme, so to speak, of things, and it makes their problem seem somewhat small, you know. So they're like, oh, this is nothing bad to take care of that. He did that. You know, so that we need to have the right words to say. So we can become fishers of men. So if we all do our part, you know, in the world, we meet him halfway, he'll meet us the rest. You know, sometimes we need to go a full 100%. And he'll be there waiting for us. But we got to do our part and do our work. We, we aren't going to see souls saved. We aren't going to see a harvest if we stay at our pews. Right. If we stay seated. Um, right. The Bible says that one day, one day, every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow that keeps coming. Right. How will we see that day come if we just stay seated? If we don't do nothing. We don't talk to nobody about Jesus. We continue our life. They don't even know that we go to church. And then we read this verse in the scripture that says, One day, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. We aren't going to see that happen until Judgment Day. If we don't go out and reach and touch lives and see things changed and witness and get Bible studies and Establish things. We really need to do our part. We need to kill our flesh. We need to get established ourselves. We need to make sure that we have good roots. We need to make sure we have the right water for our plants. If we're getting salt water, it's going to kill us. We need the living water from God to get into our hearts, to reach the depths of our soul. So that way our roots have a foundation. So that way we have a we have a crowd that will begin to see see a harvest. So that way we can get thirty fold and fifty fold and a hundred fold people into the church.
church. Amen. And we can see the place filled. Amen. We pray all the time, fill the church, fill the church. And God looks down at us and he says, you aren't doing your part. I'm trying to fill the church. I sent five people to you this week and you didn't do anything. And I think he gets frustrated at us some of the times, too, because he's trying to talk to us. He's trying to guide us and direct us. He's showing us the obvious issues with these people and how we can really prick at their hearts, how we can get to them and pull them into church. But we don't see it as an opportunity to witness to them. Me, personally, every time I get an opportunity to talk about God in church, I take it. Almost all of my essays in Lingua Chart involve something about church. You know, God to reach the teacher somehow. <laughs> that's the only way. <laughs> but that's, you know, it's the small things like that, including maybe something about church and what God's done in, in a paragraph and something that you have to write. Something you have to do for church, something you have to turn in. Maybe make a sculpture or something, an art project involving something to do with God or church. And then your sculpture teacher or your ceramic teacher or whatever sees that and says, oh, they go to church. And then they see how good of a student you are among all these other bad students in their classroom, and they know they trust you. And they begin to talk to you. And they can begin to show things to you and speak to you. And then you have opportunities to witness to them. Even at our jobs, we gotta do part. We gotta do our part. You know, we gotta reach the kingdom of God. Working with these people and being around these people may be uncomfortable, but that's why you come in with your light. That's why we need the light, to let the light shine in this spot. Hallelujah. You know, maybe you're coming to work in a dirty, nasty factory and everybody always comes in drunk all the time. And you're the only one sober. Well, maybe drunk on the Holy Ghost, but you know. You come in and you're sober and these people are drunk and you're irritated around them and you don't like being around them, but you can't find another job. I would take that as maybe God telling them, look, you don't need another job. That's why I'm not getting you one. You have this job right here. You're making 10 25 an hour. These people are coming in and telling you what, what's on their mind. Because we all know drunk people speak their mind. <laughs> They're telling you what's wrong with them. So maybe one day when they come in and just have a hangover, you can talk to them and it will register and it will process, process in their mind. It will sow a seed. we got to have the fertile soil, the right soil. The perfect time to sow a seed. we got to look for the open door. Amen. A lot of times, you know, Facebook, God forbid, everybody gives you all the time. You'll have an open door to post maybe something. Something about God. You'll see something, you know, I'll see things like, I hate my life. And then you comment, you know, God can make you like that. Yeah. You know, and then maybe they'll inbox you or you'll have a full out witness deliverance over the computer on their news feed. And then people on their news feed will see that and they'll be like, oh, maybe he's someone I could go talk to. Someone who's struggling with the same thing can say, look, they're, they're doing good. They're, they're doing better than what they were. And they started talking to this guy. And then you're going to get a friend request from some creep. <laughs> and all of a sudden, some of us, you know, we get denied because, whoa, don't friend request them. They got a huge age, right? No. Don't do it. But we have to, and if we don't like seeing their posts, then you can unfollow them. A lot of people that I don't like seeing their posts because they post about, you know, sex, stuff like that, drugs, alcohol, I'll hit unfollow. So I don't see their posts, but they see mine. So when I post scriptures and stuff like that, or maybe an encouraging word, they see that. But I don't see theirs. It's called being in the world, but not part of it. You know? It's the same concept with people. They, they come and they talk to us. We, we don't have to listen to them. We just be like, yeah. Yeah, you know. Kind of ignoring them, but catching the right, waiting for the right time to plant your seed. And that'll be when we do it, is we plant our seed at that time and at that moment. So we, we need it. We need the soil. We need the light. And we need the roots. You know. How many how many people, just a show of hands, have started coming to the church in the last year? 
Sean Hans, who started coming last year. Now keep your hand raised if you have not had any Bible studies with anybody yet. Anybody? No? No one? Well, because if, you know, if you're like, no, no, no. You know, get, get in touch with someone if you want Bible studies. Come to them. I encourage the seasoned saints, you know, the ministry, anybody who's on the platform. I encourage them to go to someone who's new and say, look, have you had Bible studies? You know, connect to them. I, I preferably, I don't, I don't know about a pastor, but I preferably would want, you know, a girl to have Bible studies with another girl so that way they can connect more and they're more receptive. That's that's how I look at it. I, I don't know about pastor, but that's how I look at it. You know, girls with girls and guys with guys for Bible studies. So that way they can connect and if they need to talk, they can talk and speak about things that they need to speak about. It's there. It's open. You know. Um, I'm going to be come, coming to an ending, so I'll rather be. So, we, we have all of this. We have the tools. We have everything we need. You know, it's right, it's right here on the table. The Bible says that God prepares our table for us in the morning. He has everything we need. He knows if we're going to eat cereal, so he gives us a bowl. You know, he knows everything. Yeah. It, it's the same concept. If he knows the creep on Facebook is going to friend us and start talking to us about their addiction, he gives us the right tools, the right things to speak to them yeah. and to witness to them and to get them into church. Amen. We need to learn to access this stuff, to open our minds. And to see people, we'll see souls saved that we want saved. We all have something. I want you to begin to think about this person, this person on your mind that you want to save. Maybe it's someone who was in church but backslid. Maybe, maybe it's someone you work with that you don't know how you could talk to them. Maybe it's someone in the church who's stumbling and falling. Put them on your mind right now and think about them. Think about their situation, their struggles, their life. Think about ways you can begin to talk to them. You know, there's people that we, that we need saved, that we need help. People that need help from God. Because the world can't help them. The world already tried to mess with them where they're at currently. Maybe the suicidal guy down the street looked to the world for help and that's why he's an alcoholic now. But you live right down the street from him and you can go talk to him. Like I said, there's someone on our mind. Every one of us. When I open this altar up, I want you to come up. I want you to begin to pour for them. Begin to war in their soul. Because things like this can only come to pass with God. It can only come to pass by His help. He helps us get the right time to plant the right seed. We need to call this person's name out in prayer. Whoever it is, if it's your enemy, call them out in prayer. Because even we need to see our enemy saved. Because in due season, 